actually has an award, Casa de las Americas Prize in 1977. And for that book, he was exiled from San Salvador. The Civil War in San Salvador was from 1970, no, 1980, lasted about 12 years. Oh, wow. And during that war, he wrote this book before, and it was pre-war, so it was very political. And because of this book, he was exiled for a few years, and that's when he went to Costa Rica, ended up teaching for 21 years, back and forth. And this book, which is caused him to leave Salvador, has been translated for all languages. It's very political and very, I started reading it, it's really good, it's just, I didn't want to present it because I wouldn't finish on it. And he is a member of El Salvador's generation comprometida. And his inspiration with his mom, and what he thinks about children and poetry is really interesting because he says, so he refers to his childhood, I want to say that is a product of institutions that might seem unexplainable, but it has an explanation. Please contradict. And childhood is a homeland of poetry, which is interesting to think because that's when you learn everything and you're embedded in culture. I think it's really interesting that he thought of it. Okay, so, I really like this book because it has a bunch of pictures in it. And when I first saw it, I thought it was gonna be a kid's book. When I read it, I realized it's not a kid's book. It's very political. And as I read through it, the main characters was the cajero, cajeros, And basically there are these wolves that are spirits and they protect the people of town. And when I read this book for like the third time, because I knew there was more than just wolves, volcanoes, and people, I realized that what was going on is that these wealthy people came into this town and they were more worried about creating an economy than worrying about this land. So what happened was that the carejos were being blamed for the people being lazy because the people didn't want to work for the rich people. So they wanted to go up to the mountain, destroy the land, and capture the carejos. Yeah, keep saying like feel it like I'm saying it wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't think I am. <laughs> but they plan to take them, kidnap them, and take them away so people would be hardworking and follow the, the rules of the landowners. Not just so the characters are the carecos, which are these wolves, and the townspeople. This is another picture. I think this this picture says a lot more than one that can find. Yes. Oh, so yeah. right here, mm -hmm. these are the cadecos and these are the workers. And they're working in the field, right? And it's a really, really sunny day. And this is the landowner that's in charge of it. They're being lazy, but it's not. It's because of the work. You can clearly see that the cadenos are protecting them from being yelled at and being pushed around. Like like he's suffering from the sun, yeah. right? And, and they're protecting him. By telling him to go into the shade. Yeah. And then this picture right here is the wealthy. Yeah. And then Tansky. And Don, Don Tonio and his 13 brothers are actually the people that own the land, or they think they own the land. And they're the ones that want to kidnap and terrorize the land itself. And Volcano Tecapa is the girl volcano. The way to describe her is that all the parts of the land that's on her, on her is her dress. And her hat is made out of flowers. And then Volcano, oh my God, I can't pronounce that, Chapa Ras. Okay. Um, that's the male volcano. And the soldiers. So during the story at the end, the rich wealthy people of the land, they send in soldiers that they train to destroy the volcanoes and the gatos. So high interpreted this book was that they were being pushed around and the gatos were the person that were spiritually connected to them. And the land, if the land was destroyed, the people wouldn't work because they felt it in their heart, like in that story. Um, 
We read it in the car. She was so connected. The movie. Ultima? Oh. When Ultima was burned because movie. of the owl. Yeah. That's why I thought I connected it to that because they're so connected to the land that they're spiritually connected to them that when the Gadegos were being terrorized, they fell down. And they protected it. The earth protected them from the sun, the work, and everything. And then they blamed, the bosses blamed the Gadegos. Okay, so this is a quote. Okay, so the Cadenos bewitched the people and made them crazy. Don Antonio said one day to his 13 brothers, and Don Antonio's brothers answered, Yes, it is true. The people don't work hard for us anymore. They want to eat when they are hungry and drink water when they are thirsty, and rest in the shade when the sun is hot. And it's all because of the Cadenos. When in reality, they're human beings. So it wasn't because they were being lazy. And then during the interview, this is what they said before the interview. So during the interview, what they said about him was, so, so it says about Arqueta, broadly understood as models, as modes of African thought, Africana thought, those ontological preoccupations are projects of fancy and understanding of Black intellectual history as one based on liberation and human agency. The theoretical framework manifested through the complexities that arise from humanity are denied and easily extend to Argueta. His allegorical novels blend philosophical inquiries with poetic rigor, the questions identified and raised in their narratives, visa versa, issues of freedom, agony, liberation, responsibility, ascend to the level of I was like, whoa, all that from this little book. <laughs> Very the interesting facts about him is that he still lives there and he's a member of Isalo's National University. He's a director of art culture in Isalo's National University mm -hmm. after being exiled and he's still a member of Isalo's Generation Comprometida. And another committee where there's a lot of Salvadoranian writers that were banned from Salvador during the war, and they're all on one. And I think he's the only one that's alive. And then I found this really interesting because my mom is from Salvador and she lived during this war. So what I found interesting was his timeline because he was exiled at the beginning of this war. But his book was published. Wait. Yeah. So he predicted what was going on from what was going on around him. He realized what was going on. So when he wrote about it, it made the government go like, no, this can't happen. They banned the book and they banned him from 